All right, it's Derek with Hunter Interviews. We are stalking in a cab, Aaron Stout. Aaron is the CMO of Powered Inc. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great, Derek. How are you? This is officially the first day of Blog World, but you have been here for a couple days now. You I've been here for a month. A month. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck in Las Vegas. He can't get out. Um, you were here for the, what is it, the Driving Sales Executive Summit. Perfect, yes. You, you want to give us a little insight on that? Sure. It's uh, some folks that are XJD Power, and they run this event. Uh, really smart guys, Jared, Charlie, Gary. And essentially, it's a conference, uh, sort of a boutique kind of conference, so 150, 200 people. And it's geared towards large dealerships and then other sort of um, online services that surround automotive. And so... These guys come in and they learn all about what's happening in the marketing space. Um, so not just social, but think about any sort of new media, any new marketing. So they learn about SEO, you know, how to improve it. Uh, so I was there, Chris Brogan was there, and we spoke a little bit about how to think about social, um, how to incorporate it into your overall business plan, and how you can ultimately drive results. And I know we chatted a little bit last night. You said these guys are really kind of much sharper than maybe even you thought they would be as far as in this space? Well, um, just so this doesn't come off sounding the wrong way, uh, I had no expectations one way or the other, right? And so I did a similar event like this called Marketing in the Oil Fields. And I actually like doing these events a lot. I mean, I love seeing people like you and, you know, different friends at the Blog World Expos, and it's a great networking opportunity to actually capture a lot of content like you're doing right now. But these guys, it's just they're, they're using it in such practical ways, and they're so focused, and they have some great case studies incredible research and so it's just it's refreshing I guess to go and just be reminded of you know people that are putting this in play in the field what a great job they're doing right um, why don't you give us a little back, uh, background on uh, on Powered Inc uh, you're the you're the CMO so you're over I'm, I'm assuming you're overseeing all the marketing initiatives I do uh, um, I joined about a year ago from a company called Bazinga I was at Fidelity Investments before that so I've been going the startup route for about four years um we basically build branded online communities for big companies, but we're also, we realize that there are concentric circles out in the social world. And so while we have branded communities, we just launched one for Kodak, which is a pretty cool one. People can see that if they want to go to uh, exchange.kodak.com. Um, we're also helping companies think about Facebook and Twitter, not necessarily launching them and manning them our, ourselves, although we do do a little of that as well. But how does that work in the, the grand scheme of things? Like, How do you think about content strategies? How do you measure that? How do you make sure that ties in with your overall social efforts? What, do you, what are you seeing from larger corporations in their, kind of their approach to social media and, and what their obstacles are? Well, so the funny thing is, is that in 2000, I've been doing this for a while now, as I know you've been thinking a lot about this for a while. Uh, it started off that companies were interested in community, but a lot of them didn't know what it really was out of the gate. And then they started to catch on, and then all of a sudden the Facebook and Twitter distraction happened, which in some ways is really good because um, there's critical mass there, particularly in Facebook, 250, maybe 300 million people now. And They're a large country. They're a large country, right? And so what's key about that is is that in some ways, they can get over a lot of the hurdles, a lot of the thought process that they need to do um, to do anything social, like how do you get the right stakeholders involved, legal, corporate affairs, etc. cetera. Um, I think the biggest obstacle is just it's figuring out how to man it and to do it responsibly. I think people have heard enough times now, like don't just let your intern pop up a blog. Exactly. Don't just sort of you know pop up a Twitter account and let someone in PR man it. Not to say that they might not do a good job, but very often it won't tie into your overall goals, and so what are you really going to get out of it? I mean, personally, I've seen the, the most successful campaigns and programs, they actually have a dedicated person manning that yeah. rather than just someone doing it on the side. Yeah, I think in a perfect world, you have a community manager, or at least you have someone that can focus on your social efforts full time. And so like Jenny Sisney, and so Kodak is a client, which I mentioned, she's the chief blogger and the uh, lead sort of Twitter person over at Kodak. And the nice thing about Jenny is she's been blogging for eight years. She's worked there for a while. She knows Kodak, so it's not like, let's find someone that can blog and bring them in. Not to say that that can't work either, but it was a, let's get someone that knows how to blog and knows the company and can really sort of help right. cement. Tie all that together. Exactly. So we're on our way to Blog World, first day. Uh, you're speaking? I'm speaking tomorrow. I'm leading a panel. Okay. What, what's, that, what's that panel called? It's called uh, Gaming Twitter, and the, the essence of it is sort of, you know, talking about how people do it, but why it's not a good idea. 
And what are you hoping to get out of Blog World from a personal standpoint? Um, maybe not from a professional, but just from Aaron Stroud, the, the man. Well, uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> the funny thing is, is um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of the things that I hear from my very smart peers uh, just reinforce things that I sort of know already. I guess personally, there's always a few gems that you take away. Uh, the real thing that I look forward to is I'm doing a lot of podcasting while I'm here, so I do a show, a weekly show with Jennifer Leggio, who's a media fighter called Quick and Dirty. We're doing that live today, and I'm also doing some guest podcasting for the um, Blog World Expo folks. And so I love being able to do that. I love having conversations like this with people. Awesome. All right, we're back. Um, <laughs> I had a little taxi uh, trouble there. So, Aaron, you just got your badge. I just got my badge. You weren't really registered, were you? I wasn't, and I'm actually not really speaking. Yes, yeah, but, but look what he got. Yeah. He got a speaker he got the and an orange, which yeah. is an all-access. So that gets you into pretty much anything. That's how I roll. You know, it's like I actually don't even work at Powered, and I really have never done social media marketing. I, I knew it. Pretend. It's all a facade. A hanger on her. So we were talking about what you were going to get out of Blog World. What are you trying to get it out out of uh, Blog World professionally? So um, the, the key for us is one. I think I mentioned content creation, like you're doing right now. We'll be doing some podcasting while I'm here. I uh, hope to do probably you know three, four, five blog posts while I'm here. Um, but the real key is is that uh, this was kind of the ultimate compliment for me. I was talking to this gentleman named. Uh, this is why we don't do interviews, like, first thing in the morning after <laughs> not a lot of sleep. Uh, Jared Hamilton, and he's at Driving Sales. I know his Twitter handle, um, which is how I'm associating him. He said to me, he's like, wow, you guys are only 50 people. And I said, yeah. He said, wow, you seem much bigger than that. And so the goal is, is to be out and speaking at as many events like this as we can, as well as marketing events, and really sort of letting people know who we are, not just pimping our brands. Um, and we do sponsor a lot of these things. But also letting people know sort of what's the value that we bring to the table. And we're big believers if we're telling our customers content is king, then we need to be doing the same thing ourselves. Right. So um, the long answer is creating content, getting our name out there, sort of reconnecting with existing contacts, influencers, and meeting new people, and really just trying to let people know who Power is and, and you know, how we might be able to help either their company or companies that they work with. Yeah, and that's how I came across you. I, I, I noticed that almost every event, you are either at there at that event or you are speaking or you know somehow have integrated, and I think that's very interesting the way that you guys approach it from a company standpoint is to really get you out there and, and almost be the, the face of Power um, so people can really kind of relate to a person rather than just a company. Well, I like the way you sort of phrase that at the end. So I try not to let this be a cult of personality or, you know, I walk that fine line between building personal brand and building Howard's brand. Um, but like Scott Monty is doing at Ford, like Christopher Barger is doing at GM, I do like to be able to put that human face on. So if someone needs something, if they have a suggestion, if they want to know more information, they know that they come to me first, and then I can sort of triage them to the right place within the organization. Awesome. Well, why don't we close with this? If you had one bit of advice to give uh, to our audience about their approach to social media, what would it be? Um, there's probably five that I could give, but I think the one that's most important, and I've been doing this literally for 10 or 15 years, and that is never dismiss someone at first blush because of the fact that you don't see the explicit value in what your relationship brings. What I mean by that is there's some people that are, you know, I don't want to say snobby, but won't follow someone back on Twitter or won't friend someone on Facebook or won't take the time to meet with someone at an event, and I know that time is limited. <coughs> Excuse me, but one of the things that I can tell you is I have been pleasantly surprised in spades. I mean, just, you know, like you and me meeting and doing things like this. Right. Uh, by meeting people and sort of just taking that time, and you would just be amazed at how many good things will happen to you personally and to your company if you take the time to really meet as many people as possible, even if you don't know where it's going to lead to. Good advice. Well, Aaron, we really appreciate your time. Hope you have a great blog world, and we'll keep uh, following and, and see what you got going on. Sounds good. Thanks, Derek. All right.